While everyone's attention is on the James Webb Space Telescope right now, two of the oldest space probes and the most remote human-made object from Earth are continuously conducting research. These are the Voyager spacecraft. The Voyager 1 and 2 interstellar probes have been in orbit for nearly 46 years. The explorers' primary mission was to learn as much as they could about the planets in our solar system. In the time since the mission began, the two identical spacecraft have escaped the sun's heliosphere and delivered the shock of a lifetime. What exactly have they found? Why is this new discovery so much different from its earliest findings? And how are the farthest reaching creations that humanity has ever produced spending their final years in deep space? Let's find out. The longest running missions in the illustrious space agency's history are Voyager 1 and 2. They have spent over 46 years in orbit, providing us with up-close pictures of Uranus and Neptune. The pale blue dot photograph, which was captured by Voyager 1 at the urging of renowned scientist and science evangelist Carl Sagan, is its legacy. The legacy of the Voyager missions is perfectly captured by the image in Sagan's words. They changed how we saw the universe and prepared the stage for later missions like the Cassini mission to Jupiter and even this year's James Webb telescope observations. Pretty good for two spacecraft that, according to NASA, have a memory that is around three million times smaller than that of contemporary cell phones. The first of NASA's two probes sent out to study the outer planets of our solar system was Voyager 2. On August 20th, 1977, it was launched from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 41 on board a Titan 3E Centaur. Approximately two weeks later, on September 5th, Voyager 1 was launched. The launches of the Voyager spacecraft were timed to benefit from an alignment of the outer planets, which only happens once every 176 years. The alignment would provide the probes with a gravity boost to enable them to jump from one planet to the next. Jupiter and Saturn imaging and analysis were tasks for Voyager 1. The Voyager team was getting ready to turn off the imaging technology in 1990 after the spacecraft had passed by Jupiter and Saturn. Carl Sagan advised they train the machinery back on Earth just before they did. While Voyager 2 was moving towards Uranus and Neptune, it also captured photos of Saturn and Jupiter. About 12 billion miles, 19 billion kilometers, separate Voyager 2 from Earth right now. The plasma science subsystem equipment on board the Voyager probes allowed mission planners to gauge the reduction in the solar wind that occurred as each spacecraft departed the solar system's outermost regions in order to prepare for the interstellar portion of the mission. Voyager 2 photographed Jupiter's great red spot during its approach and also got in-depth pictures of the planet's satellites. Thebe, Metis, and Adrasteia were among the moons orbiting Jupiter that were found by Voyagers 1 and 2. Only roughly 19 miles, 30.5 kilometers, are thought to make up the diameter of Adrastia. Voyager 2 used a gravity assist to move on to Uranus after obtaining several pictures of Saturn and learning more about its frozen moons and rings. From Voyager 1, which was intended to focus on Jupiter and Saturn before journeying to the outside of our solar system, this is where its course changed. When Voyager 2 arrived very near Uranus on January 24, 1986, it became the first spacecraft to visit the ice giant. The measurements from the spacecraft revealed that the composition of Uranus's atmosphere is around 85% hydrogen and 15% helium. It also found 10 moons orbiting Uranus and an oddly oriented magnetic field that was 55 degrees off the planet's axis. The reason for Uranus's eccentric magnetic field is still a mystery to scientists today. Miranda, a moon of Uranus, was also beautifully caught by Voyager 2, exhibiting its strangely uneven surface. On August 25, 1989, Voyager 2 made its next closest flyby of Neptune after Uranus, traveling about 3,000 miles over the planet's surface. The probe found four rings, five new moons, and what is today thought to be our solar system's most distant planet from the Sun. Pluto hadn't been eliminated yet. Since Voyager 2 is the only human-built spacecraft to have passed Neptune, its data is still very useful. Voyager 1 hasn't gotten close to a planet since it passed past Saturn in 1980, and the probes are already into their fourth decade of operation. But even as it moves away from a fading sun, 
it is still reporting information to Earth. Voyager 1 has been traveling away for many years at a speed of about 11 miles, 17 kilometers per second. It moves 3.5 AU, the distance between Earth and the Sun, farther away from us every year. Even as it gets ready to leave this solar system behind, it is currently sending communications home. The heliopause, a border area, is just one of many ways to conceptualize the edge of the solar system. The interstellar medium, which is made up of the plasma, dust, and radiation that makes up the majority of space, can no longer be repelled by the solar wind, the soup of charged particles that the sun continuously emits. According to Bill Kurth, an astronomer at the University of Iowa who has been involved with Voyager 1 since before its launch, no one knew for sure where the heliopause was when Voyager 1 left Earth in 1977. Some researchers even believed that the heliopause was only 10 or 5 AU away, or about the orbits of Jupiter or Saturn, which Voyager 1 sailed through in 1979. The heliopause is actually about 120 AU away. The fact that Voyager 1 passed the heliopause in August 2012, exactly three and a half decades after it left Earth, is one reason why we know this. The probe is now firmly located in interstellar space. The interstellar medium is present here in abundance, although you won't see much of it. A cube of air at sea level on Earth has more molecules per unit volume than even the densest regions of the interstellar medium combined. The area that Voyager 1 is traveling through is far more barren. Additionally, it is generally calm. Voyager 1 discovers something every several years as it gathers additional information about the dust and plasma out here. For instance, Voyager 1 experienced a shock in 2012 and once more in 2014. Kurth claims that the magnetic spike Voyager 1 observed was accompanied by a burst of energetic electrons that produced strong, oscillating electric fields. The ripples from these shocks extend past the heliopause, making them the sun's farthest reaching side effects. Another increase in magnetic field strength, but not the ferocious electrical oscillations, was what Voyager 1 observed in the year 2020. Instead, according to scientists, it's a pressure front, a far less obvious disruption that is spreading out into the interstellar medium. Something similar was seen by Voyager 1 in 2017. This most recent discovery, in John Richardson's opinion, demonstrates that Voyager 1 continues to surprise researchers. He claims that typically, in order to determine the probe's density, the surrounding plasma would have to shock it. Though Voyager 1 is approximately 13 billion miles away from Earth, scientists have discovered a way to utilize it to continuously monitor that density through observations like this one. Richardson adds that the results demonstrate that Voyager 1 is still feeling the sun's rays billions of miles after the heliopause. Far outside the heliosphere, he claims, the sun is still having a significant impact. Although its physical end is thought to be the Oort cloud, a band of asteroids that are subject to the sun's gravitational pull, the heliosphere truly terminates our solar system. Recent issues with Voyager 1's spatial orientation may be the first indication that one of the most ambitious space missions in history is about to come to an end. Scientists investigated what went wrong with the spacecraft's navigation and examined the specifics of space communication in deep space. How does communication work on Voyager 1? We should first go over the design elements of Voyager 1's radio receiving equipment and the computer systems that serve it in order to better grasp how communication outside of the solar system actually functions. The Articulation and Control Relationship System, often known as AASC, was created to relay information on Voyager's position in space and its course of flight back to Earth. To help amplify the faint wave signal coming from the probe in space, a high-gain AASC antenna is continually pointed toward our planet. The data rate from the probe to our planet gradually declines as Voyager's signal power steadily moves farther from Earth. The signal intensity of the probe was about minus 160.48 dBm as of 2017, which is roughly 1,000 times less than the signal of an ordinary FM receiver. However, the sensitivity of the receiving antenna network has substantially increased thanks to current technologies. Even now, more than 45 years later, NASA is still able to receive minor radio variations from Voyager 1 and respond with a much stronger signal from Earth. Surprisingly, Voyager uses 23-watt low-power radio receivers to obtain the signal at such a great distance. 
The Deep Space Network's Earth-based receiving antennas have a diameter of 34 and 70 meters, whereas the spacecraft's receiving antenna is only 3.7 meters in diameter. Large parabolic reflectors and hyperbolic auxiliary reflectors capture the microwave radiation as it reaches Earth and concentrate it on the cryogenically cooled receiver at the antenna's base. In order to ensure coverage for Voyager 1 regardless of the Earth's position concerning it, the centers for receiving signals from Voyagers on Earth are positioned at an angle of 120 degree to one another. In a nutshell, any time of the day. By simultaneously receiving the Voyager signal from a number of receiving points on Earth, the signal gain is boosted. Additionally, the Doppler radio direction finder aids NASA experts in pinpointing Voyager's precise location. The AC source that supplies each subsystem is powered by radioisotope thermoelectric generators. The use of radio frequencies with the least amount of technological interference is required for the proper communication of the spaceship with the Earth. What's the problem? NASA acknowledged that the Voyager 1 spacecraft started having issues establishing its position in space on May 18, 2021. Voyager's predicted trajectory and flight speed were unrelated to the telemetry data that the spacecraft was transmitting to Earth via its Articulation and Control Relationship System AASC. NASA got extremely concerned when the module began transmitting spatial coordinates that were produced at random back to Earth. Today we know that the breakdown of the AASC system did not cause the shift of the spacecraft to safe mode, which would have allowed NASA engineers time to investigate what had happened to it, while Voyager only performed basic operations. The stability of the radio signal emitted by Voyager 1 implicitly indicates that the probe is still moving following its original path. The spacecraft is still functioning at the designated operational frequencies and has not faded. All of this can only mean one thing. Voyager 1's course hasn't changed because its antennae are still directed at Earth. It's important to note that the device is currently 14.5 billion kilometers away from Earth. The time it takes light to travel from Earth to Voyager 1 is more than 20 hours and 33 minutes. Therefore, the entire cycle of signal receiving and transmission takes almost two days. It takes more time to communicate with the equipment now that it is traveling away from the solar system at a speed of 48,280 kilometers per H. The principal project manager for both Voyagers, Susan Dodd, was coy about the circumstance, but noted that given the length of both Voyagers' operating lifespans, such problems are not unexpected at this point in the mission. Dodd further stated that the ongoing effects of cosmic radiation on the probe may have contributed to the abnormality in Voyager 1's telemetry systems. Changing the AASC software or restarting the complete space positioning system using one of Voyager's redundant hardware systems could be potential solutions. NASA experts are optimistic despite the enigma surrounding Voyager 1's telemetry systems. They acknowledge that even if Voyager 1's AASC system does not return to normal, it will still only be able to function until 2025, when the radioisotope thermoelectric generators will have outlived their usefulness and will no longer be able to produce enough electricity to power the probe's scientific instruments. However, the Voyagers and their crew have already accomplished too much to remain indelibly a part of human history in space. Voyager 1 is still being pulled toward the sun by its gravitational field. Voyager 1 will begin to enter the inner edge of the Oort cloud that blanket of comets that extends as far as several light years away in around 300 years, according to scientific predictions. Sadly, Voyager 1 probably won't be the one to uncover the Oort cloud, which we have never truly seen evidence of. The probe is figuratively hanging by a thread. The radioisotope plutonium-238, which fuels the probe's generator, has an 88-year half-life. Voyager 1 is consequently beginning to run out of fuel, Already, scientists are faced with the decision of which probe components should remain operational. It's likely that the probe won't be able to power even one instrument by the middle of the 2020s. Nevertheless, researchers are hoping to extend the probe's life until 2027, which marks the launch's 50th anniversary. No one involved in the creation of Voyager 1 could have imagined that as a milestone. While Voyager 1 crossed the barrier into interstellar space in 2012, Voyager 2 left our solar system in 2018. One of NASA's five science instruments on board Voyager 2 was ready to be turned off because the spacecraft's power source was running low. Engineers have previously sacrificed heaters and other unnecessary power guzzlers to keep it running. 
However, experts have now discovered a means to draw backup power from a safety feature that controls the voltage of the spaceship. Surprisingly, according to NASA, Voyager 2 will continue to operate until around 2025, when it will be 11.4 billion miles, 18.4 billion kilometers beyond Earth. Even after it is unable to transmit signals to Earth, it will continue to move farther into the Milky Way. For instance, NASA predicts that in 40,000 years, Voyager 2 will pass within 1.7 light years, 9.7 trillion miles, of the star Ross 248, a relic of humanity marking the start of its attempts to explore the cosmos, floating across space for eons to come. NASA is using backup power to keep Voyager 2 running until at least 2026. Scientists are keen to keep as many research instruments operational as possible since the scientific data the Voyagers are returning becomes more valuable as they move further from the Sun. Meanwhile, NASA has been considering expensive and complicated suggestions from several parties for a new, long-term probe in an effort to prevent the Voyagers' legacy from fizzling out slowly. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.